think it's going to go on during the Olympics. My feeling is is that they're pre they've been preparing us. First of all, they've been keeping us in the dark with the fluoride. Because like when you're, if you've got this fluoride on your brain and you're trying to think, you're trying to work something out, you know, and say you come to a conclusion first of all and then realise it's wrong, you know, that sort of depression is going to put you off thinking harder or thinking more. So they've been keeping us in the dark. And then in the last three years they've been preparing us. Weaken our immune systems. I've never known so many flus going around this last winter, 2011-2012. There was everything. Everyone was coming down with everything. I had about six or seven coughs or colds in a row. And I'm, you know, I usually consider myself as having a pretty good immune system. So they they have been they have been weakening it with this aluminium. This aluminium, when you breathe it in, will weaken your immune system. And if it bonds with fluoride, fuck knows what's going on. I mean, people must realise all this autism and OCDs and all of that. There's a reason for it. That's the uh, fluoride. That's the depression. When someone has to turn the light on and off four or five times, you know they're trying to look for answers as to why they're not feeling right. So you grasp at whatever you can, you try, don't you? Survival, that's what we do. We try and survive, and that's what I've been doing. I'm trying all sorts of stuff, thinking all sorts of things. You know, and a lot of it, we've been thinking about God, and you know, that Dan Brown book came out about different sort of Jesus, and it's all really almost irrelevant, isn't it? You know, just been, well, I don't know, actually, because the Vatican, the Catholic Church, they've probably got something to do with this. I mean, God, what a hypocritical organisation they are. I mean, how they hoard their wealth. Blimey. I mean, they break most of the commandments, most of the Ten Commandments, don't they? Thou shall not rape in there. I mean, that's disgusting. How many of these bishops did that? It's awful. Right, so I'm going way off the point here. Might have to change the title of this to a uh, brief history of everything. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah? Still interested in hearing my crap? But it's, you know, it's what I believe. I'm telling you the truth of the makeup of my mind. This is where I am. Well, shall I add in there alien creatures that might be living among us? I'm not... What I say is, imagine an octopus. When they've got their arms straight, not flailing all about, but they've sort of got them straight, so they can be, like, straight down. And imagine one that lives not in the water, but on land... And imagine it's quite dark blue, or perhaps they change their colours anyway. Quite dark blue, but because they've been living out on land, they might have a bit of fur, or they've got some... It might be a bit bumpy. It might be quite revolting looking, very probably very scary looking, if you... You know, because they're not going to just talk to you, Hi, I'm an alien. <laughs> no, because it's going on a deeper level than that. Not speech, but telepathy so they say they are talking to us all the time and we didn't know that and perhaps they're affecting the way the world is working now I'd say these aliens these particular ones are on our side and they're protecting us from the, the other possible aliens the the highly advanced reptilians who maybe look exactly like us and Quite possibly they were the ones who first introduced the city of Babylon. And ever since that city of Babylon, we've had this hierarchy, we've had this type of society where everyone's on the bottom ladder trying to make their way up the ladder. And, um, and then we come to situations like we have today, where they need to control this. This population of humans has begun why... And they're probably, you know, they might be jealous of our 
third eye. Or they may, maybe they've got it too, you know, and they just didn't want us to to develop it as well as them because then we'd, you know, we wouldn't take their crap anymore. So this is one possibility that we live in a world with higher beings than us, just that we're unaware of them. And these octopuses, these land octopuses, by the way, they um, they they could probably cloak themselves and. I don't know if this is a fact that an octopus's brain, most of an octopus's brain is in the upper part of its limbs. And that's why I say when you look at one of those pictures of an octopus with his legs straight, and you can, you know, the top of the limbs are quite wide, and you can imagine that this is just this massive brain. It's like a brain machine with eight legs. <laughs> what a wicked, what a... What a cool, um, cool species, man. So they're, they're probably helping us. They're probably guiding us. That's probably why there are good things out there. Maybe Google. I don't know. I really want to believe Google is good. They're part of YouTube. And, yeah, so here, here's to you. You've, you've been good so far. Now, don't change. Don't sell up. Flog it to some shareholders and it becomes crap. But also... Uh, there's the warning. Thanks a lot. Bye. It's made me think now why the government um, wanted to do these sort of uh, happiness um, reviews recently. You know, and it, in a sense, on the outside, it seemed like we came out all right. You know, people are generally quite happy. Things about human beings is that, you know, we'll... It's very hard for us to admit we're not happy because we tend to strive to do things to make us feel happier. So when someone asks us, you know, how happy are we? Well, we're quite likely to be on the optimistic side of things because we're, because we're currently doing things about trying to be happier. So in a sense, you're not going to admit defeat before you've got to the end. So you can say, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy. But you know, I think the truth is, I think we're pretty miserable. I don't want to be a downer. I don't want to be negative. I'm not like that at all. But let's just look at the facts. You know, we are all sort of going about our jobs and getting pissed off in traffic jams and getting annoyed with your partner. I mean, blimey. I mean, the divorce rates are up in the roof. We're not happy. Because they've been making us not happy. And they know that. So they do this test to see how happy they are, see how far we can push them. That's my view. And I, yeah, just to say about human beings as well. Um, you know, I've been growing up disliking human beings more and more. And in fact, you know, coming to the conclusion that, yeah, we should all be wiped out because then at least the animals and the trees and everything else can sort of get back to normal in a sense um, but now I'm coming to the conclusion that we humans we're much better than I thought it's only that we've we've had these controls upon us that have made us bad um, I mean let's put aside for the moment fluoride and and all the rest of it and just think, you know, sort of being sent to school and the education system is designed to control rather than educate. That's what it makes our brain function so we can read and write and add up, so we can work, good enough to work. But not, they didn't want us to understand the world, certainly not in my schools. Um, you know, in this sort of education system designed to control us by the time we get into around puberty age, you know, we want to rebel against it, which is the natural thing because subconsciously we know it's bad. And, you know, even the, the, the rich people have it even worse, I think, with boarding school. And, 
you know, by the time you've gone through all that, you're probably quite capable of being nasty. And let's face it, that's how most people get on uh, in life, how they climb up that ladder is certainly by employing nasty tactics. That's, I believe that. I've certainly seen it in jobs I've had before I became self-employed. Yeah, you know, colleague you thought was a good pal would stab you in the back because he's got kids to feed and you know that that certainly makes people more determined and they've probably seen it before you see someone get on that way then you come to the conclusion that's the only way you can get on and you know so human beings are good it's just that we've been conditioned we've been poisoned we've been put through the mill basically if we think we're treating animals badly have we been treated much worse? Find out, get the knowledge, stay away from the control aspects, we'll become enlightened, it will spread, and then we'll all be happy. Okay, thanks. I just want to add this quickly before the battery runs out. Uh, since I've been drinking rainwater, I've been feeling more positive. And I'm actually beginning to think, actually, there is hope. There is hope for the human race yet. Um, if we all get positive, stay away from chemicals, you'll start to feel positive. Your brain will start working properly. Release chemicals, it just makes you feel great. Even, you know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to look for escapes. If we all do this, if we all do this quickly, actually, there is hope. We could just have this worldwide fucking amazing connection okay so that's the message come on let's do it